The game is changing, my friends, and HelperReporter.com is actually moving to Connectively. The whole UI has changed, the system has changed, and I'm going to show you everything that you need to know to get free backlinks to your website, just like this DR82 backlink that we got from HelperReporter.com for free using Harrow. But with the new system that's come along right now, I'm going to give you all the tips, templates, SAPs, systems, and example pitches that you can use. Plus, I'm going to show you exactly how to use it step by step today so that you can share it with your team or use it yourself. And this is all based on what's working for me. You can even see we've got a backlink from Harrow right there. This process works, people. Let me talk you through it. Let's go. So today, what we're going to be doing is testing out the new version of helpareporter.com, which was previously known as Harrow. And this was really good for getting backlinks previously, free backlinks using PR, but they are switching to Connectively. So starting from early 2024, they'll be phasing out helperreporter.com and switching to Connectively, which we're going to test out and try today for building backlinks. So this is the website, connectively.us, and we're going to click on join now to sign up. I've never tried it before, so we'll be learning together. I'm going to put in my name and my details right here. And there are some massive changes coming to Connectively that we're going to talk about today. So just going to verify my email. There we go. We can activate the Harrow account. So we're going to go on set up password right here. And then from here, it will say, tell us who you are. So I'm going to select, I am a subject matter expert. Obviously, we're not going to sign up as journalist. And one of the main benefits of Harrow on Connectively is that the UI is a lot better. I'll show you that in a second. It's actually quite good for filtering. So you can filter by topic, outlet, date posted, etc. Something that previously you would have to use a software to do to manually filter out all the rubbish. And I think there's a lot of improvements come along the way in the future. So we'll click on get started. We'll put in the speaker bio right there. And then we'll put some topics into the expert section. Interestingly, ChatGPT is not there. We'll try marketing. There we go. Search engine. There's a lot for business. So I'll try just add in business right there. And there we go. So now I'm going to hit save and continue. And from here, you get two options, right? So one of the big changes about Harrow is that actually after five pitches a month, it's going to cost more money. So as you can see right here, $19 per month gets you 15 pitches per month. That means it's going to be about $1.26 for each pitch. You can also save some searches, get email alerts. So you only seem to get two email alerts for your saved searches. Now, one of the biggest differences between the light version and the core version is the view public profiles section. And I'll show you that in a minute, but it's quite interesting. So I'm going to actually sign up for the core right now, just to show you all the features that you get. So we're going to select that plan. It will give you an option to buy additional pitches as well but you have to note here as well is if you don't use them up then these pitches that you buy are going to expire so be really careful of that because if you buy a bunch of pitches but you don't use them they're going to be gone within a month so be a bit careful about that we'll skip this for now and then i'll just pay for this by the way if you want an example of all the stuff that i'm talking about today i'll include this in the document so for example my harrow bio you can check it out right here in case you want to just have inspiration for your own and so now that we're logged in we get a bunch of different options right so you can save a keyword search you can activate email alerts so when your saved search for your keyword actually pops up you'll get an email and Again, it's pushing you towards buying stuff on the upgrader plan. Just be careful of that. All right, so now we're going to go to Got It. And what we can see here is a massive difference between the old Harrow UI and Connectively. So what you'll see from here is that you can search queries for your keyword. You can filter down the outlet, the deadline, the topics, and the date posted, right? So, for example, what we'll see down here is each of the queries. These are all individual queries that we could respond to and you get details of the journalists that you're pitching to the status so whether it's active or not the query description and what you also notice is that sometimes people say no ai generated responses so what's quite interesting about this is that journalists are not looking for ai generated responses right they want humans to reply to them which makes total sense to me because the quality of the responses will be a lot better and also chat gpt can hallucinate so much and then you've got the deadline right here topics to talk about, media, news outlet, etc. Basically everything you need to know. Some of them are going to ask for a bio and a headshot in each submission. So just be careful of that. And then you can see the deadline for each one, right? So if I'm going to respond to this, I have to respond before December the 31st by 12 a.m. So what we can actually do 
is filter the deadline for the next seven days. We can change the topics to say business because I've run a SEO agency, so I'll, I'll, it would make sense to reply to that sort of stuff. You can sort by the date posted. And what we can also do in here is put marketing. Um, we'll get a bunch of ideas for marketing related topics to respond to. So for example, productivity hacks for effective Twitter marketing. So you can easily search and narrow down to topics that will be relevant to you. If you go a bit more niche, for example, like SEO, then you're going to have less opportunities. So for example, there's only one SEO pitch that I can respond to that fits with the criteria I've filtered down to. Whereas if I go a little bit broader, then it makes more sense. Now, one of the useful things about this is that you can actually see the outlet that you're going to respond to. So you can filter down, for example, to Forbes an entrepreneur magazine. These might be two websites on your list to get backlinks from. And then you can just filter down and find relevant prospects from them. Now, why would you do that? Because you only have a limited number of pitches that you can respond to. As you can see for $19 a month, you only get 15 pitches per month. Those pitches expire within a month as well. You can buy more. So if we go to buy pitches over here, you can see the prices to buy extra ones. But basically it's gonna be a game of making every pitch count. So. Unlike before, previously with Harrow, where you could submit as many responses as you want and just go for volume, this is a totally different game because you're basically going for the sniper approach, which means that you should be more selective on the responses that you send and the outlets that you respond to because you only have a limited number of pitches. And every time you pitch, it's going to cost you like $1.26 to actually get a response. Now, what I would also do is recommend optimizing your profile right here. So if we go to edit, we can add a picture of me in the profile photo. And I'm guessing this is going to be public for people to see. So we can put that handsome chap right in there. And then we've got the website URL, the title. I would recommend submitting responses as a CEO or someone senior in the company. And also you can choose whether you have your email public on your profile. Now, what I would assume is that if you have your email publicly listed on your profile, some people might scrape it and then reach out to you with more pitches. So I'm just going to keep it private for now. And there you have the bio, the details about you, the topics about you, etc. And then if you go to the pitches section, you'll see pitches that you've sent previously. So it will show you the title, description, query title, so you can keep a track of all that. Now, interestingly, you can also search for profiles, right? So for example, if I type Julian Goldie into the profile search, it will actually show my profile right here, along with my bio and topics. I still have to upgrade to see Julian's topics, which is interesting because I believe I'm on the core plan as far as I know. And then you can check out other people's profiles as well. I won't show it. I want to protect proof. Otherwise it's going to show their email address, etc. But yeah, nice UI, easier to use. You have to be a bit more selective with how you pitch and who you pitch to, but that's basically it. Now let's give it a whirl in terms of responding. So for example, there is a entrepreneur magazine option looking for agencies. So that would be perfect for me. And um, this is quite an in-depth one. Now, sometimes it's going to be really quick and easy to respond to queries. Sometimes it's going to be super difficult and time consuming. So I'm going to respond to this one right now. We'll hit pitch. And then you can set the email address that you want to receive the response from, the subject line and the description. So one thing that is annoying is that you can't copy and paste the questions and answer them directly in the description. You kind of have to do that before you send the pitch. So what I'll actually do is I'll write this out now and then I'll go through with you exactly what I've done to optimize the potential of receiving a positive response because the aim of the game here is to get featured, right? If we only get a limited number of pitches, then we have to make them count and that's why we have to optimize our responses as much as possible. So I'll be back in a second and I'll show you exactly what I've done. All right, so let me explain exactly what I've done here. So I actually copied the questions from the query right here, pasted them into a Google Doc so it's much easier and quicker to respond to. Then in my response, I'm going to copy and paste in a second. I put, hey, Kristen, so we've inserted the name and I'm breaking this down for you so that you can understand exactly how to do this yourself or train your team to get the best possible responses based on what's working for me. For example, you can see we're a DR53 website at juliangoldie.com. You can see that the traffic is going up nicely. The backlink profile has improved as well. And this is partly due to the free backlinks that we get from helperreporter.com. If we check out the backlinks right here and we filter down to anchor text, Goldie agency, you'll see a lot of the backlinks that we've got have come from Harrow. So we've actually got 359 backlinks directly from Harrow. As you can see, some of them are as high as DR73, 82, 64, 70, etc. Some of these are very recent as well. So for example, this backlink right here has come directly from Harrow and that was just in October, right? And we haven't done Harrow for months. 
So this process works, it's proven. I just want to show you that this does work if you're consistent with Harrow. And basically what we're going to do here is say, hey name, so include the name of the report because some people just won't do that and that's an automatic filter out. Then I've said, um, the CEO of a multi seven figure agency that specializes in PR outreach for our clients. So we do link building, which is a form of PR. And obviously they're looking specifically for agencies and specifically for PR agencies and marketing agencies to respond to them. And I'm going to delete that because that's from the original query. Make sure you do spell check your content as well and grammar check it. And then what you can see here is basically we've answered the question very directly and clearly. So they've asked for the challenge and how we plan to overcome it and I've included my responses, but it's very short and straight to the point. I mean, they could easily paste that into an article, which is exactly what we want. And it's also nice and easy to read, right? So the journalist will easily see the question and then our response underneath. And also you want to match the tone of your response to the outlet that you're writing for, right? So for example, this is Entrepreneur Magazine. So we're using keywords, for example, like organic marketing, ROI, etc., to match the tone of the magazine. And then Every sentence is on a new line just to make it easier for the journalist to read because I know some people will respond to it with massive walls of text copied and pasted from ChatGPT and you could use ChatGPT but honestly I think it would be faster in this sort of situation to actually just do it yourself. So it took me about 15 minutes to write the response right here. The good thing about writing this on Google Docs as well is that it's going to highlight any sort of grammatical problems. For example, like that one. And then I'm just going to copy and paste that into Harrow. Now, this is actually 555 words, which is way more than I would normally write. Usually my responses are just like 100 or 200 words. But because of the number of questions, I want to make sure I get this right. And each one of these is pretty short and they could just easily paste that into an article. So I'm going to take that right here. Then we'll go to Connectively. We'll paste that in the description. It's just under the maximum character count, as you can see. And then at the end, I've just put, thanks so much for reading down to this point. Please let me know if you feature me. I'd love to see and share the article. And then I've put my name and the title right there. But honestly, you probably don't need to because you can see that it's already featured in the response. And then what I'm going to do from here is hit submit. And then what you can do is if you go to view all, you will see your responses right here. So you can see that it's been sent, the date that it was submitted, the query title. So I think this is really good actually for managing a team. If you have your team log into here and then you can see all the pitches have sent, who they've sent it to, etc. And if you want to see the original pitch, you can go right here and you will see it all there. Plus the original query is right there. So you can click through to everything you need. And that's basically how you can get free backlinks with the new version of Connectively. Now, I actually think it's a really good move by helperreporter.com in many ways. So let me talk you through it. So number one, it's going to reduce competition because obviously you get less pitches, which means that you're not just going to get loads of people just doing a pitch fest and trying to get as many backlinks as they can. Additionally, it's a better UI, right? So the UI on the system it's much easier to use, much easier to filter, etc. It's much quicker. You don't need to just sit in your email inbox. And it's easier as well to manage all your pitches and see what you sent previously. Finally, I think the profile feature is really good because you can seek out journalists and you can reach out to them that way as well. And basically just build relationships with people in your industry that could potentially feature you. Now, what I'm also going to do is include my Harrow SOP in this document. So you'll get an example pitch right there. You'll get the Harrow bio example that we've talked about. And finally, you're going to get the Harrow SOP that talks you through exactly the fundamentals of how to respond to Harrow queries. Now, this is previously designed for helperreporter.com, but honestly, it's the same sort of fundamental responses, like making sure you use the template, no walls of text, respond to stuff relevant to you, etc. And this whole system even gives you a pitch template that you can use for building backlinks directly from helperreporter.com, but it's all going to work for Connectively too. So thanks so much for watching. I'm going to include this document inside my free course. And it's going to be in the SEO link building section. Link is in the comments in the description. I'll call the module Connectively, as you can see right here. That is published and ready for you to check out. So links in the description right there. And if you do want to book in a call about how to get more leads, traffic and sales from SEO, feel free to book it in. And we'll talk you through how we take websites from zero to 145,000 visitors per month and generate thousands of dollars in sales using SEO. And if you want us to talk you through personally building you a link building campaign that predictably and consistently delivers you more backlinks, traffic and sales to your website, feel free to book that in. You get an SEO domination plan, discover the secrets of link building, learn the best strategies for your site and discover how to rank your competitors based on what's working for us. So feel free to book that in and thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it. Bye bye.